And next this week, we have one of our interesting, wonderful comic book re reviews. Interview. <laughs> All of our reviews are wonderful, but this is an interview. And interesting. With Mike Barron of Nexus fame. We spoke with Mike up in Toronto. So let's go take a look. How did you get your start in comics? I was working at an insurance company and I got a phone call from an editor at a newspaper who thought I could draw. And he said, there's this guy down here trying to sell us his art and he draws just like you. And that was Steve Rude. <laughs> now obviously the editor didn't know anything about art. but <laughs> So I met Steve and we started working together and, and on the basis of his art we got Nexus published by Capitol. What type of comic related training did you have? Well, I'd been a child, of course, <laughs> and I'd read a lot of comics, and I lived in my head and imagined a great deal. I don't really think that when it comes to writing that there's such a thing as training. I mean, you can't teach how to write. You can give exercises to help somebody give form to their stories, but I really kind of worked it up on my own. What happened was I wanted to be an artist, and I started to draw and I drew like crazy for five years. I got the Loomis books and the Hogarth books, and because I wanted to do comics, instead of just sketching and learning my ABCs, I, I drew my own comics, which were terribly written, or no, no, they were, they were brilliantly written, excuse me, but terribly drawn. And uh, I suppose I kind of trained myself. Hmm. Uh, who are your influences? <laughs> I absorb pop culture like a sponge, but there's only two influences that I acknowledge. Carl Barks and Philip Jose Farmer. Okay. Um, what projects are you currently working on right now? I'm working on two Nexus series for Dark Horse. One is debuting in February. Nexus crosses over into Comics Greatest World and goes after the man from the Vortex who it turns out is a mass murderer. In March, the new series that Steve Rude and I have been working on for over a year will debut. We have three issues in the can. I will be writing King Tiger for Dark Horse. And I have a book coming out from Marvel in the spring called Blockbuster, which is part of their Marvel Select series. Um, what do you think about the current state of industry? Is it better or worse uh, now compared to 10 years ago? You know, we're going through this roller coaster ride right now, and we just kind of hit bottom. As far as it, everything is better in the sense that there's always social progress, and for this, it means I get a better break as a creator. But right now, there's a lot of talented people out there looking for work just because there's the market is shrank, and, and, and people are not buying the books they used to. We're, we're in a serious situation right now, but I'm sure we'll get out of it. Can someone earn a decent living in the comic book industry? Yes. In fact, the big change that I've noticed in the past 10 years is that comics have grown up to join the other entertainment uh, milieus like film and, and publishing. And you can tell this that hardly a week goes by where you don't hear comics-related news reported on CNN or in USA Today. They're just accepted as another form of publishing now. What makes your style different than other creators? I have no idea. <laughs> it's the style I write is, you know, I write by drawing each comic page out by hand, like this, this fanboy idiot who still wants to write comics. But because of that, my stories have an organic wholeness about them, because I, I move one step at a time like a blind ant with feelers. You know, I, I put down one scene and then I have to think, what happens next? What would be logical? What could happen? What would be realistic? What would help the story? And I think in that sense, my, my writing leads to a different style. What has been your greatest accomplishment in comics? I have no idea. <laughs> One of those uh, <laughs> trick questions, huh? Um, do you believe there's racism or sexism in the comic book industry? I think there's racism and sexism wherever you look for it. But that we talk too much about groups and not enough about individuals. I think that each individual should be judged on his or her merits. And we should avoid 
making sweeping pronouncements and certainly sweeping condemnations. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much.